This is the Apple Crisp demonstration video. Cooking principles. Fruit cookery. One, cooking fruit breaks down the cellulose fiber, causing it to soften and making it easier to digest. Apples are a great source of fiber. However, eating them raw makes it really hard on us to digest. When we have a chance to break down the hard cellular walls, it makes it so the fiber is more soluble and easier to absorb by our bodies. This also means the nutritional value of both a cooked apple and a raw apple is very similar. It's just the fiber that makes it easier for us to absorb. Nutrition. Apples. Vitamin C. It is essential for growth, development and repair of the body tissue. It is also needed for the absorption of iron, proper functioning of the immune system, wound healing, and the maintenance of cartilage, bones, and teeth. Fiber. A high fiber diet is important. Fiber normalizes bowel movements. It helps maintain bowel health by reducing your risk at colon cancers. It lowers cholesterol levels by reducing blood pressure and inflammation. It helps control blood sugar as fiber foods slowly absorb into the blood than other foods. It also will reduce your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. It helps achieve healthy weight as high fiber foods make you feel full for longer. And it's been proven to help you live longer as it reduces the risk of dying from cardiovascular diseases. Crumb topping. Carbohydrates from starches and sugar. Carbohydrates are responsible for supplying the body with energy, sparring protein, and assisting the utilization of fats. Ingredients. For the apple base, you will need two medium apples. Apples are the main flavor of our dish today. It'll provide a nice crunchy fruit base underneath the crumb topping. You could substitute apples for any other kind of fruit that bakes well and still holds its structure, such as pears or peaches. 15 milliliters of water. We're using water and sugar to help make a coating to prevent the loss of vitamin C as the apples oxidize next to the air. It's important that we coat them as fast as we can so that we do not lose nutrition. 10 milliliters of sugar. Sugar will add an additional sweetness to our apples, especially if you're using a tart baking apple. Also, sugar when combined with the water will help make a coating to cover the apples and prevent the loss of vitamin C as the apples oxidize. It is important we do this as quickly as we can so we do not lose our nutrition. One milliliter of cinnamon. Cinnamon is a spice derived from the bark of a cinnamon tree. It is also very powerful in flavor, so a little goes a long way. This will be a complementary flavor to our apples in our dish today. Next up, the ingredients for the crumb topping. 40 milliliters of flour. Flour is used in a small amount here. The starch in the flour will help bind with the butter and give the mixture a more crumbly texture. This will be a nice contrast amongst the more softer texture of the apples. 50 milliliters of rolled oats. Oats are a nice way to give an additional texture to your crumbly topping. It will also provide extra fiber to the dessert. 25 milliliters of brown sugar. Brown sugar will add sweetness and a rich flavor to the crumb topping due to the molasses present in it. Brown sugar also helps add a little bit of moisture to the topping. Brown sugar also will help you tell whether your apple crisp is done or not. The caramelization that happens between the sugar and the butter in the oven will give the crumb topping its lovely golden brown color in the end. 25 milliliters of margarine. Margarine coats the mixture in fat to help create a crumbly texture by adding moisture. Without the fat, the topping would be extremely dry and unpalatable after baking. It is important that the margarine coats the flour, the oats, the sugar, so it helps fry in the heat of the oven, creating that crisp, crumbly texture. These are all the ingredients you need to help create your apple crisp. Equipment. For this recipe, you will need a casserole dish, dry measures, small measures, metal spatula, 
custard cups. Vegetable peeler. Chef's knife or a paring knife. Cutting board. A medium mixing bowl. A metal spoon. A pastry blender. Hot mat. Oven mitts. A metal fork. And finally, a lifter. Table setting. The table setting you will need for the apple crisp fish is as following. The placemat, a luncheon plate, a fork, a napkin, and a water glass. These are all the things you need to set the table for the apple crisp lab. Method. Bechette stands for the beginning steps that you need to do at the start of your lab. B stands for books and bags. They should be away either at the back of the classroom or under your table. A stands for apron, which you need to put on to help protect your clothing. S stands for sleeves. You need to roll them up past your elbows. H stands for long hair that touches the shoulders that needs to be tied back or hats that need to be removed. C stands for chairs that should be tucked under your table and out of your way. H stands for hands that should be washed properly for 30 seconds using hot water and soap. E stands for equipment, which you should be getting out as quickly as possible without wasting time. And T stands for the towels that you need to pick up. You need at least two dishcloths and two tea towels. Step two, use oven racks in positions number four and number five. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit 190 degrees Celsius. This is your first time using the oven. How we set the temperature is by hitting the bake button first and then using the up and down arrows to set the temperature that we want. Once we have the right number, leave the oven alone. It will slowly turn on and start to preheat. Make sure you preheat your oven early as it takes a long time to get to the proper temperature. If you put your apple crisp in at the wrong temperature, it's more likely to burn or be undercooked. Step 3. Spray casserole dish with Pam, cooking spray, or grease with margarine. Now the natural sugars found within the apple will make it so it's easily to stick and burn to the bottom of the dish. It's important that we grease it really well so that our apple crisp dish can easily be lifted out and served. What I like to do is to use a piece of wax paper that I dip into our margarine bucket. Then I spread the margarine all along the bottom and the walls of the dish. I make sure I get into the corners as that's the main place I find most grade eights do not grease enough and the dish sticks. Make sure that your dish has a nice coating of margarine and put off to the side until you're ready to put your apples in. Step four. Wash, peel, core, and thinly slice the apple. Place in the prepared casserole dish. Sometimes when you buy apples from the grocery store, they may have been treated and dipped in edible wax. This thin coating helps make the apples look more shiny, but provides a more gummy texture to your apple. Even though we're not using the peel, you should get into the habit of washing your apples before you eat them, just to remove this coating. Also, because you don't know how many people have handled your apple before it got from the grocery store to you. Next, when we're going to put our cutting board down, a good tip to help keep it from sliding and moving around is to put down first a wet dishcloth. The dishcloth will provide an extra barrier and a grippy surface for the cutting board. Then, Place your washed apples on the cutting board and start peeling them with the vegetable peeler. As you peel your apples, you should always peel away from yourself, never towards yourself, because if you accidentally slip with the vegetable peeler, you will peel your skin, and that will not be a fun accident to have in the kitchen. So be safe and peel away. 
Make sure you do both apples as quickly but safely as possible. As the apples are exposed to the air, vitamin C is slowly leaking out of them. So we want to save the nutrition as much as possible. This process is called oxidization. Vitamin C oxidizes as soon as it hits the air, which means it evaporates away. And then your apples will start to turn a rusty brown color as it oxidizes. Once you have all the peel removed from your apples, put the peel into the compost bin. Don't worry if you didn't peel around the stem or the bottom. This will be cut off as we slice our apples. Now you may notice our apples roll around a lot. We want to make sure we give you safe, flat surfaces to work with. Start by using a paring knife or a chef's knife and cut the apple in half. This gives us a nice flat surface so the apple doesn't move around. Next, cut your apples into quarters. That means into four. Again, you'll have nice flat surfaces for our apples to rest on. Next, hold your apple tightly, but with your fingers in a nice tight C position. And I want you to use your paring knife to cut the apple core out at a 45 degree angle. This not only cuts off the skin that might be left on the bottom of the apple, but will remove the core and also give us an additional flat surface to put our apple on. If you notice any of the peels still left behind, you can trim it safely off at this point. Now we have nice flat surfaces to slice our apple. The slice that you want is about the same thickness as your pinky finger. So each of these quarters, I will slice into four equal pieces. They're roughly about a centimeter each. That means for every quarter, I am making three cuts. See how I take the two pieces of apple and compare them. They should be the same width. This means in the oven, they will cook up the same amount of time. And that way I won't have one apple that is mushy and one apple that is crunchy because it wasn't baked long enough. They will be baked at the same time. Repeat with the other apple until all the apples sliced up. Then put the apple slices into your prepared casserole dish. Step five, sprinkle water, sugar, and cinnamon over the sliced apples. Now we want to coat our apples as quickly as possible so that the vitamin C stays within the apple. What we do is we create a mixture of water and sugar. This will help prevent that from happening. Another way, if you have it on hand, is to add a few drops of lemon juice. The absorbic acid found within lemon juice also helps prevent the vitamin C from evaporating into the air. Now, when you go to put the cinnamon in, my best tip for you is to use a metal spatula and gently tap it into the dish to sprinkle it all over. But if you do accidentally just drop it in into one spot, you can always use a metal spoon to toss your apples around. This is also a good idea, so that way you make sure that your apples are coated with all the sugar water and the spice. This way, all your apples will stay its brilliant color. They won't brown before your crumb topping goes on top and before it has a chance to go in the oven. Step six, in a medium bowl, stir together flour, rolled oats, and brown sugar. When we go to make our crumb topping, it is important that you measure your ingredients accurately. Remember to use a metal spatula to level off the dry ingredients. And when it comes to ingredients like brown sugar and margarine, you need to pack them into the measures as tightly as possible so that there is no air present. We want to make sure that this mixture is well blended so that the brown sugar has a chance to meld with all the flour and the oats. That way, when it's mixed with the margarine, it has a chance to caramelize in the oven, creating that crispy topping. Step seven, with a pastry blender, cut margarine into the rolled oats mixture until the flour is blended in thoroughly. Mixture is brown and not white in color. A pastry blender is a great way to cut up soft fat without using a sharp tool. Pastry blenders are just a series of wires that do this. You might want to have a metal spatula on hand though. Often the soft fat gets stuck between the wires. 
and you may need to use a metal spatula to gently push the fat through the wires and then keep going. Make sure you don't stop until the mixture has small pieces. We want the fat to be cut up into the size of small green peas and the overall mixture looks brown and you do not see the traces of dry flour anywhere. This makes sure that there's enough fat coating all the dry pieces so it has a chance to fry up in the oven, creating our crispy topping. Dry flour that's left in the bowl and then put on top of the apple crisp will never bake up properly in the oven. And when you go to pull out your apple crisp dish, you will see dry flour on the top. It is unappetizing. So make sure, please, you check your bowl to see that all the flour has been incorporated into the mixture. Step eight, sprinkle crumb topping over apples. When you go to put your topping on top of the apples, make sure you do your best to sprinkle and coat them evenly in an even thickness. That way it has a chance to cook up properly and evenly in the oven as well. You don't want to have a spot that is oily because it didn't have enough time to cook in the oven or a spot that's over baked because it is too thin of a crumb topping mixture. If you need to, use your hands to help distribute the crumb topping evenly amongst the dish. Step nine, bake for 20 to 25 minutes or until the apples are fork tender and the topping is golden brown and crisp. When you go to set the timer on the oven, you need to hit the button that says timer on off. Then use the up and down arrows to select the desired time. You always go with the lower baking time first. You can always check your apples and if they're not done, then proceed to add an additional five minutes. Once the timer is set, it will start counting down slowly. When you want to turn off the timer, you use the same button that says timer on off. Step 10, serve warm. Remember to have it marked by the teacher before eating. Remember oven safety and use a hot mat to protect your countertop from being burnt and make sure you're wearing oven mitts when taking the casserole dish out of the oven. Remember, hot glass looks like cool glass. This dish is best served warm and if you have it on hand, a scoop of ice cream. The yield for this recipe serves two. Test for doneness. One, poke apples with a fork. Apples should be tender, soft. Two, crumb topping is golden brown. These are the two tests for doneness for the apple crisp dish. Standards. One, Apples are tender. When you go to pierce your apples with a fork, an apple does not come up on the fork, meaning that the fiber hasn't had a chance to break down. When the apples are soft, they have only a chance to be pierced by the fork and not remain on the fork. Two, crumb topping is golden brown and crisp. You can see that the fat has been cut into small enough pieces to give a chance to coat all the dry ingredients so that they had enough time to fry in the oven and become crispy and golden brown. The golden brown color was also caused by having the brown sugar caramelized in the oven slowly and that you do not see any spots that are underdone and oily or overcooked and too crispy. These are all the standards for the apple crisp. Let's check my demonstration apple crisp. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to check to see if my apples are fully cooked. I stab it with a fork and no apple came up on the fork, which is a good sign. It shows that the fiber had broken down in the oven. I tap the top of the apple crisp to see if the topping is crispy and fully cooked. If it was underdone or still moist, it would have actually pulled up with the fork when I tapped it like that. You can see the color is a lovely shade of golden brown. The margarine had a chance to be cut up into small pieces and well blended with all the dry ingredients. And also what I don't see is any pockets of dry white flour. Now let's divide it up and serve it with the lifter 
and look at the dish on its own. I do want to check to see if all the apples are fully cooked. So if the fiber has been broken down properly, the fork should slide through quite easily with very little effort. This means that when I eat the apple crisp, I'm able to dissolve as much of the soluble fiber as possible. And again, the topping's still crispy. This apple crisp dish is a great lab for beginning students. Not only does it teach you knife skills and measuring skills, but it's a very fast dish with only eight simple ingredients to put it all together. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Happy baking and thanks for watching.